Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about a very famous egg dropping problem. So let's first understand the problem. So in egg dropping, we are given n eggs and a building with m floors and we have to find out the minimum number of drops that is required to know the floor from which if an egg is dropped, the egg will break. Now there are five conditions that apply to egg dropping problem. So if the egg doesn't break at a certain floor x, it will definitely not break at any floor below x. And if the egg break at a certain floor x, it will definitely break at any floor above x. And the egg may break at the first floor. And it's also possible that egg may not break even when you drop it from the last floor of the building. And finally, if an egg doesn't break, we can reuse that egg. Now let's talk about the critical floor. So the critical floor is the last safe floor from which we can drop an egg without breaking it. So if we go even one floor above critical floor, the egg will break. So in the egg dropping problem, our aim is not to find the critical floor, but to find out in worst case, at minimum, how many drops we will require to find the critical floor. So we are trying to minimize the number of attempts we will require to find the critical floor. Now let's see some examples to better understand this problem. So here we have a building with 100 floors and we have only one egg and we are asked to find out the minimum number of drops that we will require to find the critical floor. Now suppose we drop the egg from 50th floor and it breaks. Now we don't know whether floor 1 is critical floor or floor 2 is critical floor or whether floor 3 is critical floor or whether 49th floor is the critical floor. So there are 49 possibilities and any one of these floor can be critical floor. Similarly, if we drop the egg from 100th floor and it breaks, we don't know whether floor 1 is critical floor or whether floor 99 is critical floor. So there are 99 possibilities for critical floor and any one of those floor can be critical floor. So when we have only one egg, we cannot randomly drop the egg from any floor because if it breaks, we lose our egg without finding the critical floor. So if we have just one egg, the only possible way is to try dropping the egg from first floor. And if it doesn't break, then drop it from second floor. And if it doesn't break, then drop it from third floor and so on. So suppose uh, we drop the egg from 68th floor and it breaks. Now we know that 67th floor is the critical floor because that was the last floor that it didn't break. So in worst case, the egg will break on dropping from the last floor of the building. So in worst case, we will have to make M drops to find the critical floor. So M in this case is 100. So in worst case, we will have to make 100 drops to find the critical floor. So when we have just one egg, we cannot drop the egg randomly from any floor because if it breaks, we cannot guarantee which floor is the critical floor. So when we have just one egg, the only possible way is to try dropping the egg from first floor, then second floor, then third floor and so on. Now let's see another example. So here we have two eggs and a building with 100 floors and we have to find out the minimum number of drops required to know the critical floor. Now we can use binary search approach. So we will first drop the egg from 50th floor. And if it doesn't break after dropping from the 50th floor, we will try dropping it from the 75th floor. And if it doesn't break, then we will drop it from 88th floor, then from 94th floor, then from 97th floor, then from 99th floor. And if it doesn't break, then we will drop it from 100th floor. Now suppose the egg breaks when we drop it from 100th floor, then in that case, we will know that 99th is the critical floor because this is the last floor from which it didn't break. So in the best case, we will cover all floors with seven drops. So first drop was at 50th floor, then 75th floor, then 88, then 94, then 97, then 99, and then 100. So we will cover the best case with seven drops. But what if the first egg break when dropping from the 50th floor? Now, since we have only one egg remaining, we will have to try all floors one by one from first floor to 49th floor. So in total, it will take us 50 uh, drops to find the critical floor. So for the worst case, it will take us 50 attempts to know the critical floor with this approach. Now, there is another approach that can reduce the minimum number of drops from 50 to a lower number. So let's see how we can reduce the number of attempts from 50 to a lower number. 
Now in this approach we will first drop the egg from 10th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 20th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 30th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 40th floor and finally we will drop it from 100th floor. Now consider the scenario when we drop the first tag from 10th floor and it breaks. Now we have only one egg remaining and we know that the critical floor lies between floor 1 to floor 9. Now we have to make 9 more attempts to know the critical floor. So we have already made one attempt and we have to make 9 more attempts to know the critical floor. So for this scenario it will take us 10 attempts to know the critical floor. Now consider another scenario when we drop the egg from 40th floor and it doesn't break. But when we drop it from 50th floor it breaks. Now we know that the critical floor lies between floor 41 to 49 and we have already made 5 attempts. Now it will take us 9 more attempts to know the critical floor. So 5 plus 9, 14. So for this scenario it will take us 14 attempts to know the critical floor. Now in the worst case when we drop the egg from 90th floor it doesn't break but when we drop the egg from 100th floor it breaks. Now we have already made 10 attempts. Now we know that the critical floor lies between floor 91 to 99. So it will take us 9, nine more attempts to know the critical floor. So for the worst case it will take us 19 attempts to know the critical floor. So with this approach we will be able to cover all 100 floors of the building with 19 drops which is better than our first approach. So in our first approach for the worst case, it took us 50 attempts to know the critical floor. But with this approach, we can do that with just 19 drops. Now let's see, can we do better than this? Now in this approach, we will first drop the egg from 14th floor. And if it doesn't break, we will drop it from 27th floor. And if it doesn't break, we will drop it from 39th floor. And if it doesn't break, we will drop it from 50th floor. And finally, we will drop it from 100th floor. Now consider the scenario when we drop the first egg from 14th floor and it breaks. Now we have only one egg remaining and we have made one attempt already and we know that the critical floor lies between floor 1 to 13. So with one egg we have to cover 13 floors. So that will take 13 more attempts. So in total to cover 14 floor it will take 14 attempts. Now consider this scenario when we drop the first egg from 50th floor and it doesn't break but when we drop the egg from 60th floor it breaks. Now we know that the critical floor lies between floor 51 to 59 and we have already made 5 attempts. So to cover the floor from 51 to 59 we have to make 9 more attempts. So 9 plus 5 is 14 again so it will take 14 attempts to cover all 60 floors. So these numbers are chosen in such a way that the number of uh, attempts never increases more than 14. So regardless uh, which floor is the critical floor, the number of attempts that we make to find the critical floor always uh, remains under 14. It never goes beyond 14. Now consider the scenario when we drop the egg from 99th floor and it doesn't break. But when we drop the egg from 100th floor, it breaks. Now till 14 to 99, we have already made 11 attempts. When we drop the egg from 100th floor, it breaks. Now we know that 99th is the critical floor because this was the last floor from where we dropped the egg and it doesn't break. So for this scenario, we will be able to figure out the critical floor with just 12 attempts. But for all other scenarios to cover all the other remaining floors, it will take us uh, at, at most 14 attempts to know the critical floor. So with this approach, we will be able to know the critical floor with just 14 attempts. Now in the previous approach, it took us at worst case was 19 attempts. So this approach is better than the previous approach. Now let's talk about how we got to know that we should drop the first egg from 14th floor. So now we are generalizing the solution for two eggs and a building with k floors. So according to our approach, we will first drop the egg from x floor. So that will cover first x floors. 
then we will drop it from x plus x minus 1 floor which will cover the next x minus 1 floors then we will drop it from x plus x minus 1 plus x minus 2 floor which will cover the next x minus 2 floors so in our example we drop the x from 14th floor then we dropped it from 27th floor then we dropped it from 39th floor so with this approach we will be able to cover x into x plus 1 by 2 floors and we have to cover k floors so it means we have to find the minimum value of x such that x into x plus 1 by 2 is greater than or equal to k so when we simplify this equation uh, it becomes this and since x represents a whole number we will take a ceiling function of this value and in our example the value of k is 100 since the number of floors were 100 so when we replace the value of k as 100 we will get the value of x as 14 so that's why we dropped the first egg from 14th floor and the next attempt was from 27th floor then from 39th floor and so on now let's take another example now in this case we have two eggs and 36 floors so for this case the value of x will be 8 so we should drop the first egg from 8th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 15th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 21st floor and finally we will drop it from 36th floor now consider the scenario when we drop the first egg from 8th floor and it breaks now we know that the critical floor lies between floor 1 to 7 now to cover those 7 floors we have to make 7 more attempts so in total we have to make 8 attempts to cover first 8 uh, floors now consider this scenario when we drop the egg from 30th floor and it doesn't break but when we drop the egg from 33rd floor it breaks now we have already made 6 attempts and we have 2 more floors to check 31 and 32 so we need to make 2 more attempts so 6 plus 2 which is again 8 so with 8 attempts we will be able to cover all the 36 floors so with this approach we will be able to cover the 36th floor with 2x with just 8 attempts now let's take an example when we have 3 eggs so in this case we have 3 eggs and 100 floors so we will first drop the egg from 37th floor and if it doesn't break we will drop it from 66th floor then we will drop it from 88th floor and finally we will drop it from 100th floor now consider the scenario when we drop the first egg from 37th floor and it breaks now we have only two eggs remaining and the critical floor lies between floor 1 to floor 36 and we know that with two eggs we can cover 36 floors with just eight attempts and we have already made our one attempt here when we drop the first egg from 37th floor which means we can cover the first 37th floor with just nine attempts now consider the case when we drop the first egg from 37th floor and it doesn't break but when we drop the egg from 66th floor it breaks now we have to check all the floors from 38 to 65 which means 28 floors and we have just two eggs remaining and we know that with two eggs we can cover 28 floors with just seven attempts and we have already made two attempts seven plus two is nine so again we can cover 66 floor with just nine attempts now consider the scenario when we drop the egg from 66 floor and it doesn't break but when we drop it from 88th floor it breaks now we have already made three attempts and we have to check from the floors 67 to 87 so we have to check 21 floors and we have just two eggs remaining and we know that with two eggs we can cover 21 floors with just six attempts so three plus six again nine so we can cover 88 floors with nine attempts now consider the scenario when we drop the first egg from 88 floor and it doesn't break but when we drop it from 100th floor it breaks now we have made four attempts already and we have to cover from floor 89 to 99 
and with two eggs we can cover 11 floors with just five attempts so five plus four nine again so we can cover all hundred floors with three eggs with just nine drops so here we have a table which shows the number of attempts that will be required given the number of eggs and the number of floors so when we have just one egg the number of attempts that will be required will be equal to number of floors and with two eggs we can cover 11 floors with just five attempts and with two eggs we can cover 21 floors with six attempts and with two eggs we can cover 100 floors with 14 attempts and if we have three eggs we can cover 100 floors with just nine attempts so in the next video we will see the implementation of the egg dropping problem